Good morning. My name is Shubh, and I'm a PhD student in the Navigation and Autonomous Systems Lab at Stanford. The title of my talk today is Getting the Best of Particle and Kalman Filters, GNSS Sensor Fusion Using the Rao Blackmailized Particle Filter. Bayesian filters have been used for sensor fusion as the classical approach to combine prior information about the state, dynamics, and sensor data across time. These approaches have shown to be computationally efficient over alternatives such as optimization-based approaches. And an important characteristic of Bayesian filters is that they can characterize the uncertainty in state estimation along with the process of state estimation itself. Hence, they are widely used in a variety of sensor fusion tasks in previous literature. For example, in GNSS INS fusion, visual inertial fusion, and GNSS vision fusion. Uh, two main types of uh, Bayesian filters have been used for sensor fusion, which have differing advantages. Kalman filters and their family, such as the extended Kalman filters, are computationally efficient due to performing analytic updates as well as scale well with the size of the safe state space. However, they rely on uh, linearized measurement and transition models, as well as characterize the uncertainty using a unimodal Gaussian, which has uh, limited performance in the real world. On the other hand, particle filters can handle the nonlinearity in measurements and transitions, as well as characterize a multimodal and non-Gaussian uncertainty. However, Particle filters are computationally expensive to run, especially when the number of particles is high and scale poorly to large state spaces, uh, which is usually a requirement in most real world applications. So there is a need for filtering methods that can combine the advantages of both Kalman and particle filters. Uh, Rao Blackmailized Particle Filters or RBPF are one such types of filters that operate by separating the tracked state into linear and nonlinear parts. The linear part is tracked efficiently as a Gaussian distribution using an extended Kalman filter, while the nonlinear part is tracked using a particle filter to better model the uncertainty. Hence, raw black particle filters combine an EKF's efficiency with the particle filter's multimodal modeling capability and provide improved uncertainty estimation over pure EKF. Uh, here is a visualization to give a sense of how an RBPF combines both of these. Uh, looking at the propagation and update steps of different filters, an EKF efficiently propagates uh, and updates the estimated state as well as covariance uh, as a Gaussian distribution. Compared to that, a particle filter updates the weights associated with a discrete set of particles, which better characterize the multimodal uncertainty. Uh, compared to both of these two, an RBPF uh, both efficiently updates the weights associated with different particles and efficiently updates the parameters of a Gaussian distribution that is also associated with each particle and has both the advantages. And this ability to be able to characterize a multimodal uncertainty is important for sensor fusion in urban environments where there are multiple sources of uncertainty present from the sensors. For example, in GNSS code phase, the uncertainty arises from bias errors from multipath and non-line of sight signals. For carrier phase, it is from the changing values of integer ambiguities from frequent cycle slips. And for visual odometry, it is from dynamic objects as well as changing appearances in the environment. So multimodal uncertainty must be captured for positioning via sensor fusion. And this is why we uh, use an RBPF for uh, developing a GNSS VO sensor fusion approach. In this work, we track uh, using the RBPF a state that comprises of the position, orientation, velocity, as well as integer ambiguity terms for a multi constellation setting. The position is tracked as the nonlinear state part in the RBPF, while the rest of the state components are tracked efficiently as the linear part. Hence, our RBPF designed this way is able to capture multimodal uncertainty in positioning, uh, efficiently track the full state using Gaussian approximations, and robustly tracks multi-constellation integer ambiguities in urban environments. Uh, here is a summary of prior work on filtering for sensor fusion. 
uh, we categorized these works based on their ability, their, their support for code phase measurements, carrier phase measurements, and visual odometry, as well as whether they characterize a multimodal uncertainty or track the integer ambiguity. To the best of our knowledge, our RBPF-based approach is the first that satisfies all of these criteria. Our contributions from this work are as follows. We develop a hybrid Bayesian filter for robust state estimation in urban environments uh, via sensor fusion that couples uh, tightly GNSS code phase, carrier phase, and monocular visual odometry measurements. And for that, it uses raw blackwellization to combine the efficiency of Kalman filters with multimodal modeling capability of a particle filter and utilizes that to quantify the uncertainty in positioning while accounting for multimodality. We also experimentally validate our approach on real world data that is collected in a dense urban environment. Uh, here is the outline for our talk. Uh, I will talk about our proposed framework for state and uncertainty estimation and each of the components involved in detail. Next, I will talk about our evaluation on real world data set and finally conclude. So uh, here is the architecture for our proposed framework for state and uncertainty estimation. Uh, we start from processing the measurements, including GNSS code and carrier phase measurements to detect cycle slips, as well as camera images to compute visual odometry based on monocular depth. Next, we combine these with the attitude and heading measurements from AHRS and the prior state probability distribution and pass them to the raw blackwellized particle filter that assimilates this information to produce the estimated state as well as a current state probability distribution. We also use this information in an uncertainty estimation module to determine or quantify the uncertainty using the metric of horizontal uncertainty level. I will next talk about uh, our measurement processing uh, process. For handling GNSS measurements, an important consideration in urban environments is to account for limited satellite visibility. So it is important to use multi-constellation measurements in these urban canyons, which our filtering approach has a support for. Uh, the key aspects of uh, our multi-constellation support are that we, uh, account, we account for both GPS and PADO measurements uh, from L1 and B1 bands, so single frequency measurements and compute double difference measurements by using base station corrections and GPS as a reference. Uh, then to calculate, uh, cal to account for uh, the multi-constellation setup, we pre-estimate the inter-system bias using measurement residuals as can be seen from the figure on right and correct the measurements based on that before inputting them uh, to the filter. Uh, we also perform cycle slip detection for carrier phase measurements, since these are frequent in urban environments. And for that, we use a simple single frequency detection strategy that is based on code carrier divergence. Our strategy has three steps, where we first subtract the double differenced code phase and carrier phase measurements to get a divergence value for each time. And from that, we compute the mean statistic as well as a standard deviation over length, length three sliding windows. Finally, we declare a cycle slip is the value of the statistic exceeds a threshold value uh, and output a binary flag for each measurement as can be seen in the figure on right. Next, I will move on to describing our pipeline for processing camera images to generate the visual odometry values as the body frame velocities. Starting from the camera image acquired at the current time as well as the previous time, we detect features over it uh, and identify to identify key points as well as descriptors. Then we match these features and identify the top K matched features, which are to be used for the subsequent part. Parallel to this, we use the previous time camera image to uh, predict uh, to output a pixel-wise depth using a depth prediction module, which I will describe in the next slide. And using this pixel-wise depth, we project the matched features to 3D coordinates and perform 2D to 3D matching using P3P plus RANSAC to output the final body frame velocity. Next, I will talk about this process of predicting depth and projecting the key points to 3D coordinates. 
So to do that, we start from the camera image, that is the previous time camera image, and uh, cross that through a neural network that is trained for predicting depth. And uh, for this, we use MonoDepth2 that is trained with stereo supervision. Uh, we use a neural network for this task because uh, generating pixel-wise depth from a monocular camera image is inherently an ill pose task. However, previous research has shown that a neural network is able to perform this task using heuristics fairly well. Uh, of using the pixel-wise depth predictions from the neural network, uh, we project the 2D key points that we detected on the camera image using the camera projection matrix and inverse projection into 3D key points that are in the camera reference frame. Now I will move on to our raw blackbellized particle filter that assimilates all the information from the different measurements as well as the previous probability distribution. So here is our RPPF architecture that uh, uses all this information to estimate the state as well as update the state probability distribution. First, we start from the prior state probability distribution, which is propagated using dynamics and is passed uh, to the extended Kalman filter. Along with that, uh, a component of these uh, propagated state probability distribution, which is specifically associated with the position part, is passed to a particle filter as well. Using the propagated state probability distribution that is passed to the filter, uh, as well as the measurements uh, and features detected from the previous steps, we apply a extended Kalman filter update uh, to compute the updated state probability distribution. And we do perform this step for each particle uh, as is done in the raw black bellized particle filter. Within this extended Kalman filter, the covariance values are scaled uh, whenever a cycle slip is detected in the previous module. Uh, this updated state estimates are passed to the particle filter uh, along with the position probability distribution from the propagation step. And the particle filter then performs its own update step using the GNSS measurements, which finally leads to the output of our estimated state as well as the current state probability distribution. So now that I have uh, gone over our raw black bellized particle filter to generate the estimated state and the state probability distribution, I will now talk about the uncertainty estimation process from this. So our uncertainty estimation process uh, occurs in three steps. First, we compute quantile errors uh, from each of the tracked uh, extended Kalman filter distributions. And these errors are computed relative to the estimated position as can be seen in the first figure. Uh, using these quantile errors, we compute an empirical standard deviation of the error along each of the state dimensions, which are specifically the north and east dimensions. Uh, from this empirical standard deviation, uh, we compute the 99% quantile uh, uh, using the standard normal distribution to generate and, and take the maximum along both the directions to compute the overall horizontal uncertainty levels. Uh, the figure on the right visualizes the horizontal uncertainty levels, which describe a 99% confidence region around the estimated position that bounds the true position. So now that I have described our framework, I will move on to our process of evaluation uh, using a real-world data set. Uh, we use the Hong Kong data set, uh, which is collected in a degraded urban environment for our evaluations uh, and the trajectory, as well as some pictures can be seen on the right. Uh, the data set consists of a G GNSS receiver, which is a Novatel FlexPak receiver available at one hertz, as well as an IMU AHRS system, uh, which is the Xsense MTI-10 that is available at 400 hertz. We also use a uh, monocular camera data from the data set for which we use the left camera frame of the available Z2 camera that is uh, uh, available at 15 hertz. And for ground truth, the data set uses uh, Novatel span CPT with some corrections that is available at one hertz. Uh, we evaluate our approach on this data set for its ability to be able to perform uh, positioning with good accuracy, uh, perform uncertainty estimation, and also not take too much of compute time. For accuracy, we use the metrics of horizontal positioning error, uh, the error distribution, as well as a qualitative view of the trajectory tracking.
for uncertainty, we evaluate the horizontal uncertainty levels we, that are computed along the east and north direction. And we, for computation, we use the trade-off curves of accuracy and computation and compare them as the number of particles is increased. Uh, for our baselines uh, for evaluating uh, these metrics, we use EKFs uh, that are uh, used with in GNSS only, uh, MDVO only, and both GNSS and MDVO settings. Uh, we do not explicitly show comparisons with a particle filter because we observe from our experiments that uh, the particle filter diverges uh, for the size of the state space as ours, and therefore is not a good baseline. So here are our first set of uh, qualitative results on the positioning error. Uh, as can be seen from the trajectory tracks, our algorithm is able to track the ground truth trajectory better compared to other baselines. Next are the quantitative results that uh, show the same result numerically. Uh, our algorithm uh, achieves the lowest mean and median errors uh, compared to all the baselines and also low values of errors in uh, all the high values of quantiles. Therefore, our algorithm has the lowest positioning error compared to other baselines. We also evaluate uh, the ability of our algorithm to estimate the uncertainty. Uh, and for that, we compare against an EKF that uses both GNSS and MDVO. As can be seen from the top plot, uh, the horizontal uncertainty levels computed using the EKF covariance only uh, fail to properly bound the positioning error at multiple spots in the trajectory. Uh, compared to that, our RBPF-based approach uh, produces more conservative bounds, but they are able to bound the positioning errors successfully for most part of the trajectory. Therefore, the uncertainty levels from our algorithm are more reliable. Uh, finally, we also compare a trade-off between uh, the compute time and the positioning error as the number of particles is increased. We also plot the EKF mean error and EKF compute time on the same plot for reference. Uh, as can be seen from the plot, as the number of particles is increased, the positioning error goes down and while the uh, compute time goes up. Uh, and furthermore, our algorithm with 20 particles uh, shows a smaller error compared to the EKFs while requiring less than twice the compute time. So in conclusion, we developed a raw blackwellized particle filtering framework for urban, urban positioning by tightly coupling GNSS code, carrier phase, and monocular visual odometry measurements. We estimated the horizontal uncertainty levels as our measure for uncertainty while accounting for multimodality in position and verified their performance for bounding position errors over EKF. Uh, we also validated the positioning performance of our sensor fusion algorithm compared to other Bayesian filters on real world data and analyzed the trade off between the computational efficiency and positioning accuracy to demonstrate similar efficiency as EKF while producing improved uncertainty estimates. Finally, I would like to acknowledge Ford Motor Company for their support of this work, as well as Tara, Ramya, and the rest of NAV Lab members for insightful discussions and feedback. Thank you.